karma means uh, action. Whose action? My action. Whose responsibility? My responsibility. Karma is the most dynamic way to exist in the sense. Karma essentially means when you say, my life is my karma, it means my life is my making. Karma means it is the residual impact of all the actions that you perform. Karma does not mean that you did good or bad, it's not about good and bad karma. It is just that everything that happened to you in terms of thought, emotion, action and energetic reverberations, the residual impact is there as memory. When I say memory, your existence itself is memory. Without fear and guilt, there is no nothing. Without reward and punishment, there is no nothing. This fundamentally drips down from the fundamental idea of heaven and hell. If you are good, God will send you to heaven. If you are bad, He will send you to hell and burn you there forever. We must understand, however individual people might have tried to use it. Karma is not about control. Karma is about liberation. Only when you talk about mukti, we talk about karma. We don't talk about karma, about heaven and hell. Karma means my action, my responsibility, my life is my making. So if you understand this, you will not be controlled from outside, you will be liberated from inside. When I say action, as you sit here, your body is doing certain functions, which is an action. Your mind is doing certain type of actions, your emotions are doing certain other types of actions, and your energetic body is doing another kind of action. So there are four dimensions of activity going on within you in wakefulness and sleep. But if you take just wakefulness, let's say from the moment you got up to this moment, how much has happened in body, mind, emotion and energy and how much of it is conscious, if you look at it, for almost every human being it's way below one percent. If we want to understand the consequence of this, let's say you get onto your bicycle and you want to ride for ten minutes. In this ten minutes, nine minutes you close your eyes and ride. Well, we know where to pick you up, all right? So this is what it means. Right now, people feel that life is hitting them from various… you know, they don't know from where. They think somebody from up there is slapping them in the face. Destiny means… Uh, People who believe uh, that they can go where they want to go, if a destination means I'm going somewhere. When you leave your destiny from your hands and think it just happens to you, we can call that fate. When destiny is not handled hands-on, then it becomes fate or you become fatalistic from that. Karma means till now what has happened? See, you cannot change yesterday's karma. Today you can only experience. Tomorrow you can craft what is past, you can only remember that, you can only learn from that. What is present, you can only experience it. What is future, you can craft it. So crafting your destiny is possible, only possible for one who sees my life is my karma, whether he, he or she uses that word or not. In so many ways human beings around the world have realized that it is their thought, their emotion, their actions, their focus and orientation within themselves which gets them where they want to go. Others think it is happening from somewhere else. So those who think it will happen from somewhere else will live accidental lives and they always have somebody else to blame for things that did not happen in their lives. For things that they are not, they think it's because of somebody. Now, the moment you see it's my karma, your successes and your failures are yours. The moment you see it is all yours, you will do the best you can. Now this is destiny does not mean where you go in the world, because where you go in the world is in many ways a consequence of the times in which we exist. Right now we are in 21st century, you are in Estonia, I am in Monterey, California and we are talking. Well, this is possible because we are in 21st century. If we were thousand years ago, we would be doing something very different. Maybe we would be sitting in front of our cave and chatting with each other. We don't know where we would be, what kind of actions we would perform. It is very different. So what we do in the world is largely consequence of the times in which we exist.
but how we are is essentially our destiny because our destiny is in the way we experience it you could be in the best place and be absolutely miserable you can live in a palace and be horrendously miserable you can live on the street and be exuberantly joyful both are possible so your experience of life is where your destiny is because it's your experience of life that determines the quality of your life not where you are where you're going what you're doing no these things are only socially relevant they are not existentially relevant existentially for you as you sit here what is your experience of life how profound is it how pleasant is it how wonderful is it this is all that determines this destiny 100% you can take charge of this because human experience is caused from within pain and pleasure joy and misery agony and ecstasy happens from within us so when it is happening from within us at least what is happening from within us must happen my way what is happening from within me must happen my way what is around me is not all mine everybody has their peace in it maybe i also have a peace i can push for a bigger peace but that's it there is never going to be any time for any human being where the external situations will be 100% the way you want it it never ever will happen but what is within me must be 100% the way i want otherwise i am a lost case this is what karma means that you take you take charge of all that you can take charge there are a few things that won't happen in our lives if we do not do what we cannot do that's not the issue but if we do not do what we can do we are a disaster once you see my life is my karma you will not be such a disaster that is the important aspect see uh, within us as i said this body is a a huge body of memory evolutionary genetic karmic articulate inarticulate unconscious subconscious conscious levels of memories you can bifurcate into many many more strands but essentially what you know as myself is just a consequence of the memory that is stored within you which is largely not in your excess but it is playing out in its own way the very way you sit and stand the way you look the way you behave everything is controlled by your memory or in other words in my terms let's say this is an unconscious software that you have gathered within yourself whichever way the software is that is the way the machine will function if you want to go beyond this then the existing software you must leave and either rewrite your software or learn to operate without software for a little while if you want to rewrite your software something different from the existing data which is already there then you need access to another dimension of perception and knowing having said that within us there are different dimensions of intelligence well in yoga we see 16 parts to human mind but let me make it four for the sake of understanding and convenience the so first one is the intellect which is the front end of our intelligence because this is very necessary for our survival if we don't have a functioning intellect we will not know how to survive when i say functioning intellect essentially intellect is discriminatory in nature it tells you what is what what is this what is that if you do not if you don't have an intellect functioning you will not know whether to go through the wall or go through the door that's how it will become it is functioning all the time it is this functioning is happening from memory if see a child may try to scratch the 
you you will see a bird or an insect comes into the house he doesn't know how to get out he doesn't he doesn't recognize the door it tries to go through the wall it tries to go through the glass window so that is happening because it, in its memory it's not there but your pet dog or your pet bird knows how to go through the door or the window whatever is open so this is the same thing without data your intellect cannot function so anything that functions with data is a limited possibility that it is functioning within those limitations memory is hugely empowering on one level but it is also a boundary that now i have seen you if i see you again oh this is my friend vishen okay suppose you are not in my memory i look at you and think oh who is this stranger so memory is also a boundary line which most people refuse to cross so whether you read one or 10 or 1000 books you are only building memory if you operate within this memory you are operating within your own self uh, imprisonment that you have caused to yourself so you are a human being you are this person all this is based on evolutionary memory karmic memory genetic memory and variety of other levels of memory we classify memory as eight different dimensions of memory all these memories put together you sit here and you may not remember all of them but they are, have a role to play for example uh let's say 25 generations ago how your great 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 grandfather looked you do not know but his nose could be sitting on your face right now even your skin tone remembers how your forefathers were a million years ago it is this bank of memory which makes you who you are and all of that or not even a minuscule of that is actually in your conscious memory the residual impact of this is playing up as tendencies within you if you do not overcome these tendencies or if you do not rise or transcend above these tendencies of karma then all that will be happening is past will be repeating itself the dead are living through you if you want a life of your own if you want to be a fresh life here it's important that you enjoy the richness of your karma at the same time you are able to stay above that you are able to use this to enhance you know the quality of your life but you don't allow it to seep into today because if it seeps into today you have no life your parents your grandparents your forefathers will start living through you this is very important that you take you understand and accept karma for what it is at the same time you create a little space from it we have been telling people that everything is managed from up above well the coming generation of people once again have come to a place the ancient generations knew this very well but once again after many centuries the coming generation of people i don't think anybody of the next generation want their life to be managed from heaven they want to be in charge of their lives if they want to be in charge of their lives it's most important to understand that there is something called as karma 